Hey everyone, in this video, we're going to learn about how we can use embedded components to help streamline your Connect onboarding experience. And I have my friend Jorge here who's going to tell us all about it. So Jorge, what do you have to show us today? Hey Cecil, thanks for having me. I'm Jorge, I'm an engineer working on Connect Embedded Components, and I'm excited to go through this demo with you. Let's jump right into it. Forever is a SaaS platform for pet groomers that gives them the tools they need to manage their pet business. In the Forever site, users can take online payments, bookings, manage their payments with things like refunds and dispute management, and then view their payouts, uh, view their balance and upcoming payouts. What we're gonna go through today is specifically the forever onboarding flow. So this is essentially how new accounts uh, come into forever and create an account. What users see when they create an account is a login flow, an information collection flow, and then forever displays what's known as a, an account link to redirect users to a hosted onboarding flow from Stripe. Stripe essentially collects all of the KYC information in this flow. And once that is done, redirects back to forever. At this point, the account is payments enabled and they can start taking online payments. What we're gonna do today is optimize this flow and go from hosted onboarding to embedded onboarding, essentially removing that redirect step that takes users to a separate page and bringing all of that KYC collection flow into forever. So this kind of reminds me of another product that we have called Stripe Checkout. But the difference is with Stripe Checkout, you use that whenever you're buying a product or you know getting a subscription. And then what we do is redirect users from the web application over to a Stripe hosted page. And there they can enter all their payment information, they can see their products and you know so on and so forth. They can hit pay. And then when that's complete, they get redirected back to the application that they came from. So this kind of feels similar to that, just, just that we're talking about Connect, right? Is that is that accurate? That's a great analogy, Cecilia. Yeah, I would say uh, that matches uh, exactly what we're going to do today. There's also a couple of Connect-specific optimizations that we will go over. OK. OK. So let's jump onto the Forever code base uh, to first show how the existing hosted onboarding flow works. Forever is a Next.js site, so I'll also be using React today. Um, let's actually create a new account on Forever so that we can see how that works today. So I enter my user information. I'm asked for a business type, business name, and country. So I've entered that information as well. What's happening in the background here is Forever is creating a Stripe account. They're marking the account as an account that will be enabled for payments. They're passing in the information that has already been collected, so it doesn't have to be collected again. Uh, and the account traits that they're specifying is that the account will not have access to a Stripe dashboard, so everything will happen within the Forever site. Uh, and then Forever will be responsible for collecting fees. They'll be responsible for losses and requirements collection. So in colloquial Stripe terms, this will be known as a custom account. Um, OK, so Stripe creates Forever creates that account and then displays a link to hosted onboarding to collect the KYC information. When I click this link as a user, I need to first authenticate. So I'm in test mode, so I can enter zeros uh, to bypass this step. Once the user is authenticated, now the KYC collection flow is displayed. What Forever had to do to get this to work is to create what's known as an account link. An account link is a pretty simple API, basically forever calls accountslinks.create, passes the connected account ID and the redirect URL, and then essentially renders that link onto the page for the user to click on. OK, so let's actually go through the entirety of the onboarding flow. I'm going to fast forward through the information collection flow so that we can see what happens at the end of onboarding. Now that I've entered all of the information, I'm going to click the final submit button. What happens now is the Stripe hosted flow redirects back to forever, and now the account is enabled for payments. That was pretty easy, uh, and it worked out pretty well. However, we want to optimize this by using embedded onboarding. So again, going from a hosted flow to an embedded flow. So let's actually make those code changes to forever to make that happen. The first step is I need to create an account session. An account session is where I would specify which embedded components are enabled. And the parameters needed are the connected account ID. 
as well as the list of components that I'm going to enable. So in this case, I'm only enabling, enabling the account onboarding component. So I've set up an API that essentially creates an account session. That's step one. Step two is in the front end, I need to initialize embedded onboarding. Uh, first, I need to initialize connect embedded components by calling load connect and initialize, passing in the publishable key, and then a function that uses the create account session API that I just created where the embedded onboarding component is enabled. This gives me a Stripe Connect instance, which I can then use to render the connect account onboarding component onto the page. So with these two pieces in place, let's replace the implementation of the account link, which is here with this embedded component and come back onto forever and create a new account to see this in action. An account got created, an account session got created, and now I'm seeing the embedded onboarding component in the page. I go through the Stripe user authentication step, which we'll talk about how we can remove this step uh, shortly. So I authenticate with zeros again, since it's test mode. And now the KYC collection flow is embedded onto the page uh, in forever. Um, let's remove the user authentication step. And I can do this in forever because forever uses an account configuration where forever owns payment losses and requirements collection. So I can do this by specifying a feature onto the embedded onboarding component called disable Stripe user authentication. So I pass in that feature. Let's sign out and create a new account to see how this works. So again, an account has been created, an account session has been created, this time with the feature. And now I see the KYC collection flow directly. Um, there's another optimization here, which is that the colors don't entirely match the look and feel of my site. So this checkbox is blue, this button is blue, but really forever is green. So what I can do is I can use the Connect Embedded Components Appearance API to pass in parameters onto the embedded component to make it match the look and feel of my site. So I've done the work ahead of time and I've found which parameters are the ones that match the look and feel forever. They are here. Uh, let's go ahead and use them. This component is essentially the same as the previous one, except it has the appearance parameters. Let's go back to forever and refresh. And now the embedded component is rendering and it exactly matches the look and feel of my site. I love how you were able to use those components in Stripe to one, still enable folks to do the onboarding, but at the same time too, you're able to customize it to give it a very familiar look and feel. So you're still collecting the same information you're still onboarding your customers, but you don't have to redirect them to another site and then bounce them back. So customers can get everything done in the same space, in a familiar space, and you just offer a more unified experience to them, which I'm sure they, they really appreciate. That's right. It's really the same data model flow. Stripe is still responsible for collecting the information. You still get the benefit of not having to implement the entire information collection flow yourself but it is embedded uh, onto forever instead of being in a different hosted site. Um, let's actually provide all the information here. I'm gonna fast forward through the information collection flow. Okay, I've provided all the information. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the final submit button. And just like with hosted onboarding, what I've chosen to do in this case for embedded onboarding is to simply redirect the user back to the home of forever dashboard now that the user is completely payments enabled. Um, this is very easily customizable as the embedded onboarding component supports an on exit callback where you as a developer can decide what to do. In this case, I've decided to redirect back to the dashboard, but you could change state to render a different UI or redirect elsewhere here. Okay, so that was pretty easy to integrate. Um, the other task that I have here is the payments list. So. I need to implement a payments list here that lists all payments, supports filtering, pagination, refunds, disputes. It would be a lot of work for me to do that as a developer and a lot of APIs to deal with. Instead of doing that, I'm going to use the embedded payments component. Okay, so there's two steps to get the embedded components to work. First, I need to create an account session, which I already have the API for. So what I need to do is essentially add the payments component here in addition to the embedded onboarding component. So what I need to say is payments 
enabled. True. Once I've done that, the other piece that is missing is in the front end, I need to initialize embedded components just like I did before. Uh, and now instead of rendering the connect account onboarding component, I render the payments component. So really it's the same code as before, except I replace connect account onboarding with connect payments. So pretty simple. Uh, and I'm gonna use this component instead of this to do so that we are now actually rendering the component onto the page. Great. Let's come back here and refresh. Now I have a fully working payments list. I'm going to create a test payment so we can see this component in action. Test payment got created and you can see it is rendering it. There's filtering capabilities. I can see the payments timeline and even perform a refund on the payment. So that saved me a lot of development time. Uh, and now I have a fully working payments list. And I love how much functionality you get out of just adding a component. Like you mentioned, you get paging, you get filtering, you get refunds. And if I think about the amount of time and testing and maintenance that a developer would have to do to add that functionality to their website versus just adding a component, like it will save us a tremendous amount of time and make us so much more productive. So it's, it's really great to be able to add this type of functionality without having to write all that code ourselves. Yeah. And in this demo, we've seen two embedded components, embedded onboarding and payments. However, if you go to our site, you will see that we support 17 components in GA and seven in preview. Um, from payments, payouts, issuing, capital offers, account management, these components are a great way to build quality, high quality, customizable, and integrated UIs into your platform site. As you've seen on this demo, they're also pretty easy to integrate. Honestly, I had no idea that we had this many components for people to use. So for folks, I definitely recommend that you head over to our documentation and take a look at some of these different components that we have and the different scenarios that they support and see if they can fit inside of your application. But with that being said, we've just learned how to use Connect Embedded Components to help streamline your onboarding experience. So if you want to learn more, definitely please check out some of the other videos we have here on the Stripe Developers YouTube channel. And please share your feedback in the comments below.